Hey, yo, peace, family. This is Lord Jamal for the Anatomy and Godcast. And if you watch the Godcast, you know my number one sponsor is Miracle Food. That's right, Miracle Food, the perfect cleanse and reboot for a healthy immune system. And in these times, you know a healthy immune system is very important. It's also anti-inflammatory. Miracle Food has moringa, uh, black seed oil, beetroot oil. It also contains CBD. Miracle Food is just what it says. Miracle Food. Brought to you by my brother, the Chakra Doctor. So this is a Black-owned company, y'all. We promote Black-owned companies here on the Godcast. Okay, so go to ChakraDoctor.org and get your Miracle Food today. Tell them Lord Jamal sent you. Peace. <laughs> Turn the neighborhood into the Bay of Pigs Kidnapped the fathers and enslaved the kids Now they poison in the water that they gave the kids He ran from the cops so they sprayed his wind We gon' turn the precinct to the Bay of Pigs Saw the crib like that's the way you live Loaf of bread, baking soda, sitting in the fridge My melanin garners hatred, it's sacred Hussein boat, I'm too swift for the races Drugs change the house structure See my uncle smoke rocks downstairs Now the attic is in the basement What up, what up? What's good, y'all? We back up in this bitch. Yeah. Once again. Make sure you click those likes. If you have, if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click that notification bell. And that's how we do, 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 do. Dig a digger in the house. Hey! Lord J in the house. Godfrey, well, Godfrey's not in the house, but you know, he, he's in the house in spirit. He's in the house. Yeah. YouTube crew, Patreon crew, big up yourself. American Negro, big up yourself. Look at them, they're already talking about. Kwame Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, check it. Peace. Welcome back to the Anatomy and Godcast. I'm Lord Jamal. I'm Digga Digga. Uh, Godfrey is, he said he's filming some shit tonight. So he can't be with us tonight. I know a lot of y'all have been like, uh, where's where's Digger? Where's where's uh Godfrey? Um, you know, it's probably a little disturbed um in the midst of everything going on in pop culture and in the podcast world. Yes, maybe. It's been a lot going on. It's been a lot going on. I know over there at um the Joe Button podcast. Shout out to Joe Button. 
Um, you know, the people that he had on his on his podcast was Rory and what's the other brother? Other Maul. Maul and Rory. I think they had a little falling out, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. Uh, apparently, you know, there was some things going on in in the in the behind the scenes as far as uh it's just one of those things that happens when you do business with with friends you know i i've seen a million i've seen both of them respond to each other and have seen a million and one think pieces about it and um i i i think i i think i see it from both sides i think i think i definitely uh I think I can, you know, I, I understand from Joe's perspective, it's like, you know, business is, is still business. And I can see Maul's perspective, like at the end of the day, you know, it's about respect and, and just, you know, it's a lot going on. I, I hope they get it together over there. If, if the if the business ain't going to be salvaged, at least, you know, hopefully the, the, the friendship can still be intact but we'll we'll see you know shouts out to all parties involved i hope uh i hope they work it out i mean it you know it makes it makes one reflect on dynamics and yeah um, you know what i mean how, i mean how think, things work we have a dynamic here on our show abs- absolutely um i mean hey you know we 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 even talk uh <laughs> behind the scenes and stuff just about how how everything came together and what's messing with like even like in some of the stuff i post i was seeing uh <laughs> people was coming in my comments like what's up you ain't on the pot you ain't on the guy cast no more and it's just like honestly it's just been you know i've just been traveling and doing a lot i had a lot of family stuff going on so i i uh you know i haven't been present but i was thinking and, and reflecting and one of the things real quick uh, just back up off the off the um oh a little bit <laughs> a little loud throat um just bring it down a little because remember we turned it up on on the pre-pro uh, oh true 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 so yeah because we didn't want that shadow it's okay it don't have to be right up on you you know what i mean these mics are sensitive but anyway continue well one of one of the things you know i had said to you in, in the beginning when you when you first asked me to join on and stuff, I was uh I was a little reluctant at first, just cause me personally, like I don't I don't really like to talk about people. And I know when you're, you know, when you take up this position, you know, this podcast and on on one side of it, it's it's good to be able to tell these stories and and pass them on down and just have them kind of live like these are almost like our our time capsules if you will to to pass on to the next generation as far as like sharing our stories and our our history and and our feelings about things like if we don't talk about it somebody else is going to tell our story so for those reasons I said yo I'm all for it but on the other hand I feel like we also have a responsibility to, you know, to talk about things, to tell the truth about things, things that we may or may not be comfortable speaking about. It's like, yes, I would love to get on podcasts all day long and talk about hip hop and and things of that nature, but I don't I don't want to talk about is Jada Pinkett cheating on Will Smith. It's like, I don't care. Like that's the, to me, it's like, that's the downside of potting. It's, it's things that I don't, you you, you know, that I don't really care to consume myself with, or just even have to internalize that energy to, to talk about it. So it was always kind of like, uh, uh, for me, but I think, you know, I think we built something great and, and as far as like you, I love me personally. I just love to hear you talk your shit. Like I had a blast this past month watching, uh, <laughs> watching what's up with Lord Jamar. Like I've always said, I, I probably even said it countless times on the show. I was like, uh, I was like, yo, uh, can we do a, a, 
a what would Lord Jamar uh what would Lord Jamar say segment? Like I've always wanted to see that. Like I I personally love to be, you know, lo- love to be the one to like present a topic and, and we've tried to do that. You know, we try to do that, but certain topics invoke emotions i think out of everybody out of you know get it yeah yeah out of godfrey and 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 we just you know and we just get into it but it's like at the end of the day i just be wanting to sit back and kiki (laughs) and and let lord jamar do what lord jamar do listen i think you know from the beginning this is this has been an experiment from the the beginning like you know what i mean like you and i are you know, we're recording artists and shit like that. You know what I mean? Who have a certain personality, who have a certain way of articulating ourselves that that people can relate to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think we came into this like, yo, we we know everything about podcasting and the and the and the the shit that you have to do to make it pop and all this type of shit this we learn in this shit as we go along like you know what i mean so the many right. the many different formats that we've gone through um you know while we have gotten to the point that we've gotten we still learn it you know what i mean as we go along but um I, I just think it's, you know, it's it's all what it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? I think we do right. certain shit at a certain time that we're supposed to be doing them. And um, I think it is a nice, it is a different dimension, um, you know, when, 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 when Artie Stax just asked me the questions or, you know, when I'm just answering the questions. But then it's a good dimension when it's you and I or you, I, you uh, me and Godfrey that's the next dimension you see him saying and then there's the next dimension when we bring guests in and you know what i mean so it's like it's not just one thing i'm like is this is this like multiple shows really like but under one umbrella like that's how networks are created like you see what i'm saying Mm -hmm. like like you got the you know the the, the the standard god cast with all of us you know what i mean mm-hmm. then you got the what you think lord you know what i mean and we could have a fucking a, a digger show you yeah. know what i mean then we have a you know the godfrey shit like we could do all kinds of shit like you know what i mean and still bring on guests and all of that type of shit and make our shit you know more cutting edge because because again the reason why i called it a god cast in the beginning is to um take it outside of the normal realms of a podcast if you a god cast that means you can do whatever you want you god peace god you know what i mean like you can do whatever you want like you can create whatever you want to create so mm-hmm. you know what i mean we used to have funny shit you know when we was in jersey we used to have funny shit coming up on the screen because you know what i mean uh uh based on what we said and all that type of shit that's how we felt like we wanted it to look at that time and and that's the resources we had so that's what we used once we went to other you know what i mean locations and all that we adapted to to our environment and all of that you know what i mean we never get too rigid either with you know, we try to stick basically with our, our our main thing, which is keep it real to hip hop and keep it real to black people and tell the truth and all that. Community. Shit. But, you know, there's a lot of things that in my mind I started and I wanted it this way, but it couldn't necessarily be that way because of certain things that happened. Like, like for instance, um, in the beginning, I very much wanted to do a three camera thing. You know what I mean? Mm. A master with two cameras. And I did that from the very start, even though I was just in, oh, what the hell? We just lost Digger. Okay, she'll be right back. So anyway, even though I was by myself and all of that, no, I'm going to wait for her to come back. I'm going to wait for her to come back. Okay. Hey. Um. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry about that. I just, I just heard you tell somebody eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> yeah. Puppy dicks, you know. Puppy yeah, dicks. Yeah, yeah, puppy dicks. Not adult dog dicks. Yeah, they can not talk some shit. I don't, you know, I don't know what's wrong with these people, but you know, there's always one or two that want to come in here trolling. Hey, American Negro, you see a motherfucker in here talking shit? Kick their ass out, bro. 
Like, don't allow that shit to happen. Thank you, sir. That's one of my moderators. Shout out to American Negro. Okay. Um, oh, thank you, uh, Nathaniel. Thank you, Nathaniel Holmes. He said, been a fan since the basement. That's right. And since the basement, right. we were doing three camera shots. I just want people to, the, the record to reflect that a lot of these podcasts were not doing uh, multiple camera shots. It was just one camera. And that's just how they was recording it. Suddenly, I'm just saying, I'm not the originator of multi-camera shots, but in this genre, I was one of the first to really be doing three cameras. Even your boy over there, you know, the, the one who will not be spoken, he was only doing two cameras. I bust out the three cameras. I'm just saying. And, hey, now, well, and now you see people doing that shit now. That's all I'm saying. Let let the record reflect. We was ahead of the whole uh streaming curve. With come the, on, the, come with on. The, what? Bef what? Before a damn pandemic. Before y'all had to do it. Okay. Mm. We got put into situation because of the oppression of the motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Of the man who fucking closed down our motherfucking uh facility. Shout out to the Black Lady Theater. Shout out to Omar, and um, they still fighting the good fight over there. Um. And Sharice, shout out to Sharice. Um, but yeah, we were forced into this uh, Zoom stream yard world early and started uh, making it do what it do early. You know what I mean? And then the whole world had to get on this shit. Like, right, right. The whole, the whole world had to actually, they were doing actual, and they still do, <laughs> actual uh network pro we already we already worked out the kinks <laughs> what what we had fucking camera changes and you know what i mean going to solo shots fucking as a matter of fact let's give digger her beauty uh saying, ready? you ready you ready yeah 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 <laughs> You see, like, come on, man. Like, we 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 was in here freaking cameras and all kind of shit. Like, like before, you know, the scamdemic and all of that. Yo, speaking of which, let me speaking tell you, it. let me tell you completely uh on, on a tangent. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you about this bitch ass nigga that I had to be on the sit next to on the plane. Talk oh my me. God. Yo, I'm so I'm still mad. Every time I think about it, I get mad. So I get on the plane. I got some food. I sit in my seat. Now I've been I had a hard day. I'm flying all day. I immediately sit in my seat. I start uh eating my food. They telling us, you know, strap up, plane about to take off. They tell you now that it's a federal mandate that you got to have a mask on, but you can briefly remove it to eat or drink. So I'm sitting there, you know, with the mask off eating. And it's a uh it's somebody sitting next to me and then a and then a a, a person, a man sitting at the in the window seat. So he says to the attendant, I want to, uh, I want to move my seat if she's not going to, uh, if she's not going to comply with the mask mandate. Now I'm not thinking I'm, I'm not even paying him no He's mind. Talking oh, about you. Yeah. Right. Because, uh, they did now the stewardess did say to somebody like maybe a row or two behind me like ma'am you got to put your mask on but i knew she wasn't talking to me because i was eating she walked right by me ain't say nothing then she said it's somebody behind me so this guy says yeah um i'm gonna move my seat uh, if, if she's not gonna put the mask on and the lady's like well you know th there's nowhere to move like the seats are full so he starts going in on her like well uh she was already told once to put her mask on and if you're not gonna do your job i'm gonna have to do it for you um and my i'm still not thinking you know still not paying him no mind eating and then he's like yeah because uh that's why they don't serve food on the plane anymore she's not even supposed to be eating on the plane she's supposed to be wearing a mask so now I stop. I'm like, oh, you talking about me? <laughs> oh, shit. Like, it got so crazy that the, the attendant was like, well, sir, there's nowhere for you to go. Do you want, uh, like, you want me to tell the captain to turn the plane around? And I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, first of all, y'all not about to be 
talking about me over my head. Mm-hmm. Let me exp- and then I just start going in on him. Let me like first of all, I don't even talk, I don't even speak out of my face to men. But you right now, let me explain something to you, bitch ass nigga. I gotta <laughs> I'm fucking eating food. You can't tell me that I can't. What you, you you trying to tell me I can't eat on the plane? You shouldn't have got on the fucking plane. And I kid you not, it was like a short, like a 45 minute flight. I must have called him bitch ass nigga about eight times. I was calling him bitch ass nigga in like five minute intervals. Wait, now this and was a black dude? He's black? This was a black man. Okay. Okay. This 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 was a black man give, like a bitch ass nigga. Giving us his best Karen. Mm. I was I was calling him bitch ass nigga the whole mm. flight. The the lady was like, ma'am, you you know, if you want to move to another seat, it's no problem. I'm like, and don't let people talk to you like that at your place of employment, especially no bitch ass nigga like the bitch ass nigga. And like I just I kept going to the bathroom, like I was just looking for he was, reasons. He was giving his best Karen, not a Kareem. He was giving a Karen. Yo, I was looking for reasons to 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 uh to interact with him every chance I could. Like I could not stop being mad. I wanted to call my cousins. Like, yo, meet me at Carousel Four. <laughs> I want this nigga fucked up. I was so mad. I never. Yo, I ain't been that mad since like my twenties. And then when the plane landed, I call. <laughs> I made a phone call. I, I had them all tripped up and shit. Like I was calling my cousin. Yeah, you outside? Like I did the fake call. Like you outside? Right. How many people you got with you? Mm-hmm. Word is born. Yeah, let me, this nigga, yeah, yeah. Let me let me tell you what this bitch ass uh-huh. nigga did. Yo, he was a bitch ass nigga the whole flight. Did you he bitch got ass read a blazer <laughs> with uh some some penny loafers? Yo, I was so and mad. A bag. I was so mad. I was trying to call them during the flight. I'm like, yo, the internet don't work. They, I thought I could buy like the internet to make the call and shit. I thought it was my card. They like, oh no, it's a short flight. We we don't um we're not giving the the full internet service. Just some you know some free movies on a plane. I'm like, ooh, yo, I think that that was God right there, like not letting me make a call through because I think I would have really had some cousins at Carousel Number Four waiting for his ass. That's how mad I was. You know, it's just all this fake virtue signaling that that really gets on my nerves. Like, like in in all of that, the reason why he tried to do that is he's trying to act like I'm trying to be super safe. This one over here is recklessly eating her food without her mask. And she's going to kill us all. Like. Yo, and for the for the ones of us that know <coughs> that this is all some bullshit, it's even more infuriating. Like, like, even if you don't think it's bullshit, it's still infuriating when people act so fucking anal over this shit because Extra. they're not they're not acting anal at every turn like these same motherfuckers that wear the mask all the time right this same mask that they're wearing will be crumpled up fucking sitting is stuffed in between the seats in their fucking car and shit like that you gotta dig down and grab the motherfucker before you put it on you know you, you don't dispose of it you're using the shit a thousand times it's dirty as fuck you're not washing it like you just you wearing it as a virtue signal, you know, that you're a virtuous person. Like, exactly. Bullshit. So every so everybody that took a sip of water, everybody that had to move their mask to drink their to drink their complimentary water. I said, now he got his mask off. You wanna say something to him, you bitch ass nigga? <laughs> you want you gonna say something to him, you bitch ass? You ain't saying nothing to these uh to these other folks drinking their water, moving their mask, bitch you bitch ass, ass nigga. nigga. Oh, I, 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 I actually I, I, I felt bad that I even had to call him that many niggas in the presence of white people. But now nah, he, he had it coming. The bitch, you bitch ass, ass, you bitch ass, ass nigga. Because sometimes the bitch assness be overflowing with these motherfuckers. Like Pe- people, kids was looking at me. I'm like, sorry, kids. I'm the, close your ears. Matter of fact, don't close your ears. Pay pay close attention. See this right here? This, a this, this, like, it's like, a like, bitch yeah. ass nigga. Right. Let me educate y'all today. <laughs> don't like, be like this like, guy. <laughs> okay? If you need to know what a bitch ass nigga look like, look at this motherfucker right here. Okay? Bitch, bitch ass nigga? Example. 
real nigga. Okay. Real nigga. Real nigga. <laughs> <laughs> the moral of the story, kids, don't be a bitch ass yeah, nigga like, like this guy. Yo, oh my god. Don't be a bitch ass nigga. I mean, words to live by. Words to live by. Yo, I, I get mad just thinking about that shit. Well, you know, that's part of it. They want to get us upset. They want us to uh bring our immune system down. Um Real quick, have you, like, are you really realizing all the things that they're offering for you to get the the the, the snake bite? Um. Oh yeah, you can go to you can go to games at half off. You can actually go. You could buy a playoff ticket Here's for, like, <laughs> for like for like seventy five dollars yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. No, New York has a scratch and vax lottery check this out they have a lottery with a ticket that's worth twenty dollars that you'll get for free if you get the snake bite and you can win up to a million dollars but here's the thing the ticket has a one and nine chance of winning something so between one million and twenty dollars, even though one in nine chance most people will win the twenty dollars, you know, 50, 40, blah. but supposedly, you know, this is an incentive again to try to. So now they have a scratch and backs. They also have a lottery for from 12 to like 17 year olds where you can win a um a four-year scholarship to a SUNY or CUNY school. Hmm. So is this something that you would get when you go take it? Like they give you this card? Is that yeah, yeah, is that yeah. How you get it? Okay. Yeah, you enter the yeah, you enter a lottery by getting the snake snake bite. Um I'm just saying, yo, like, like when <laughs> have has did been this much of trying to incentivize anything like nothing was this incentivized condoms weren't disincentivized like 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 in the in the middle of in the middle of the age the age epidemic demic they didn't incentivize condoms like this the best thing the the, the most incentive was hey you go to Planned Parenthood you can get some for free you know what I mean we go in there get some and laugh and 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 leave. <laughs> I just got free condoms. <laughs> you know, coming from junior high school and shit. Um, <clears throat> I'm just saying the incentives, you know, there's chicken, there's donuts they offering, there's they're offering all kinds of shit. And I'm just saying, people, like, like, don't you remember when the drug dealer would try to get people hooked on drugs? What they do? What they do in the beginning when the crack came out? They gave niggas oh, crack for free. Yeah. They gave niggas crack for free to get them hooked. Now I'm hearing that the snake bite might possibly um fuck up your natural immune system. So now you might need this. <laughs> now oh. they might give you something that you need forever in order to... <laughs> Yeah, now you have to get now. Now I've heard you know a couple of people I know that took this. Like now they talk about we got to get booster shots. I don't want to take the booster shot. Like, well, it, it, then you took the vaccine for nothing. Thank you, Del Monte Green Beans. That's a good question. Will you even live long enough after um taking the trick to get the money if you win? <laughs> like, or 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 long enough to enjoy it? Like. You know, they're saying that the you know, two to three years is 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 being gracious. Let's hope this is not true, but this is the type of reporting that I'm hearing about certain things. That's well, to to my understanding, now getting too specific with certain things we say on here because right. you know, to 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 my understanding, it it's only a 
you know, its defense mechanism only lasts for six to eight months, and then you have to take another one, and then you have to go again. Right. Whereas, (laughs) whereas your natural immune system is lifelong, you know, if you if you just let it do what it do, it's gonna do what it does. Um, mm, it's a shame, like like, just to see how, how many people. <clears throat> are actually falling for this like it's crazy um but also i want to say to the gods and earths i know i've said this again but i'm going to keep stressing it um the swine does have i mean the shot does have swine the snake bite does have swine in it does it really you, oh yeah 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 glycerin glycerin derived from swine yep so any of you uh muslims or uh you know moors or uh you know, brothers from the nation of gods and earths. I hope you're not taking this thing because you're swining. Yeah. <laughs> so that should just take a lot of us off of this shit right now. Hmm. I wonder and, if, they, if you uh... don't fuck with swine, I don't understand why you'd want to fuck with aborted baby fetuses. But that's a whole other thing. I wonder know? if uh I wonder if they're giving like you know, religious consideration for that, you know, for that Probably reason. not. Nope. They don't give a fuck. They would, they would actually use that to try to violate people's um, religion, I believe. You know, a spe- you know, because the religions that that um, don't fuck with swine are religions that they got beef with anyway. You know what I mean? So well, they like- let, they, they, you know, they, they let Jews get away with not taking the vaccine, uh, taking measles shots for, for their religious. Yeah. Religion. But, but, but now with this, with this new shit, it's something different. Even with them, they're, 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 they're trying to stop them from pulling the shit that they've been pulling as far as exemptions go. Mm. Yeah. And that's what's, you know what I mean? That's what's making a lot of people realize, whoa. You know, like, like even being white is not saving me anymore. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, mm. yeah. So, mm-hmm. see that the world is trying to, you know, I can see them uh, forcing. You know what I mean? I don't care if you're Muslim. I don't care if you're Jewish. Yeah. We have to save the world, and if that means you taking a swine, well, then that, you know, that supersedes everything. Wow. Yeah, they they're trying to they're trying to force people back to work. You see a lot of the a lot of the red states are ending the federally mandated enhanced unemployment, which I didn't even know you could do that. Like if the government is saying this is, you know, this is for you in your time of need and struggle, you've got governors like, well, no, people it's making people not want to go back to work. It's decentivizing them from going back to work. And a lot of states, I, th- I think uh, maybe about 23, 26 of them now are uh, are ending that extra 300 coming from the, you know, coming from the federal government. That's that's sucky. I hope, uh, you know, prayers to those people. I, I hope they have, you know, managed to you know, I guess get it back together and and recover. <clears throat> Only way out of this is mass non-compliance, period. That's you. Um what what else we got? Oh shit, big Anubis in the background getting his snore on. I don't know if y'all hear that. <laughs> he was just he was just digging for gold a minute ago. I saw him doing something. He looked like he was <laughs> trying to get a bone at the ground and got tired. It <laughs> just passed out. Oh, oh. so so. Uh, Go ahead. I was going to say, could you bring me up to speed? <laughs> okay, I was about to say, Kwame Brown. Kwame what, Brown. What would Lord Jamar say? <laughs> so, okay. Now, now, let me just say, the first time I even heard Kwame Brown, shout out to um, Divine Stargate, okay? Uh, I'm going to have her on the show one day, too. She's, you know, she's a very, 
I love that sister. Positive, interesting. She knows about astrology, all kind of shit. Anyway, the first I the first time I even heard about her, I saw a meme, and then she said it was something to the effect of like I'm on that Kwame Brown energy. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm on that Kwame Brown energy today. Mm. You know, and I didn't really know what that meant. Um then I think I saw something from Godfrey where Godfrey put on a fake goatee and all of this, mm. and he was imitating Kwame Brown. Now, this is before I even really saw who Kwame Brown was. So now after I saw the Godfrey shit, and it was funny, I knew he was probably hitting it right on the on the head. Mm. I actually, you know, when you be watching those um, IGTV shits, so I was watching something else, and then the next one, it was Kwame Brown. It was him. And he was going off on somebody. Yeah, bitch ass nigga. He was he sounded <laughs> kind of like you. Like your bitch ass nigga. He looked like Dennis the Menace, motherfucker. The nigga fuck your wife and blah, 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 blah. And, and I don't want to come on your podcast. I'm, you know, I'm not even fully sure who he was talking to. But as I'm listening to him, I like, oh yeah, Godfrey had this nigga down. Like this nigga is pretty funny. Um, who is he? You know what I mean? Where'd he come from? Um, yeah, what's what's going on? Because he was pretty entertaining to me. I like I liked him. He said, I ain't gonna he said, I ain't gonna box your bitch ass like <laughs> so I ain't no boxer. Well, basically, um, he was someone he is a now I'm not really a follower of of basketball like that. Like I watch it, but I don't really know, you know, I don't know stats and things. So I can't one hundred report on like his basketball career. To my understanding, he was drafted back in two thousand and one uh by Jordan himself or, or you know to the Wizards he was like a, a a top draft pick and I'm not sure you know I'm not sure how well he uh you know he played in his career but at some point um as of lately the the all the smoke podcast I believe that's the name of it and this, and you know, and I didn't see this stuff myself. This is just what I'm gathering from all of these like other outlets now, reporting on, on it. The smoke is that some that's, some basketball players? Is that's, that like- that's Steve Stephen Jackson, okay. um, Matt Barnes. Got you. I know. Okay, Matt, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So so they have a they have a uh, they have a podcast, and so they were speaking on Kwame Brown. Um, probably in a manner in which Kwame was not uh, pleased. So Kwame started giving them the business. And um, and then at some point, Charlemagne attempted to report on what was going on in that situation. And, you know, he was trying to, he was trying to be humorous in telling them, leave Kwame alone. And what he did was he he kind of he exposed some uh, personal family information in, of of Kwame's um, in an attempt to basically tell them like, yo, Kwame not the one to fuck with. You know, I'm from South Carolina. His family from South Carolina. His family X Y Z, and just they not the ones. So in doing that you Back know, with the good hair i know he keeps saying that i don't know yeah he, he's refer- that. he's referring to matt barnes in, okay in, oh, in, yeah. oh in yeah, yeah. Regards. and he called so, mr mendes right and um you know he he basically got at charlemagne just like yo you know you speaking on things you don't have no business speaking on and you know it's causing ramifications you know, back at, at home. So relax, it, it, you know, and I'm putting it, I'm putting it modestly what he was saying. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I ain't even going to repeat what he was saying, but basically he just was let the chopper fly on everybody and anybody who even attempted to comment on the situation, he let them have it too. Now, how does Charlemagne get into this? And then, yes, doesn't Charlemagne somehow intertwine with this? And then there's like cease and desists from Charlemagne. Well, that- well, well, this, well, 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 this is the thing. Charlemagne, Charlemagne, in an attempt to 
report on what was going on with their situation. He was trying to, you know, he was trying to be funny. Like he was, he was trying to say, y'all need to stop fucking with Kwame Brown. Leave Kwame Brown alone. You know, I'm my, I'm from South Carolina with his family and his family, you know, is with all the smoke. So, you know, then he just started like, he just started telling all Kwame family personal business, like, you know, real, you know, history on them. And, um, and it, it, it just caused, you know, it was real bad. Like it made things real bad for, for Kwame at back at home. Apparently it made things bad for Charlemagne back at home. Cause like Charlemagne was speaking on things, you know, from being from the same neighborhood as Kwame. But now when, when the cameras is off, when you off air and you got to go back home. It's real people back at home that's dealing with the things you said. So at that point, Kwame responded to Charlemagne like, yo, you, uh, you know, you got some nerd to be speaking on people, personal history. Like you got charges. You, you know, you got a, <laughs> your mountaintop ain't so snowy either. And at that point, Charlemagne, I guess, got some lawyers to send, or it was either Charlemagne or, or the breakfast, or you know, Power One Hundred Five. Somebody sent a cease and desist to Kwame to stop speaking on, you know, to stop speaking on the things that Kwame was speaking on in regards to Charlemagne. But all of it resulted in Charlemagne ended up uh, giving an apology. You know, he he issued an apology. I believe Matt Barnes and and all those other brothers issued an apology because I think once uh you know a, as Kwame says once he sprinkles some of Mama's cooking on there that's that's his tag phrase. He gonna he sprinkling Mama's cooking on him and shit. He gave him some Mama's cooking and uh, oh, what the fuck? Somebody just said, Lord Jamal, send me your address so I can send you some of Mama's cooking. Yes, that's uh. That's um, that is how uh Kwame uh exp- expresses himself. Like those are his reads. Sprinkling, sprinkling, Mama's cooking. Okay. And uh, I mean, an ass whooping gonna give you an ass whooping. Uh, well, he gave him a verbal lashing, mm. and uh, and you know, from there it was uh, it was just on. I guess they they, <laughs> I guess they sat back and was like, yeah, you know, uh. We we actually don't want this smoke and and we were wrong, you know we were wrong to speak on him and his and his family. Charlemagne issued an apology. He was wrong for bringing up that man, family history and and I guess those guys over at the podcast they sat back like, damn, you know what? At the end of the day, the fact that he was even able to be drafted in the NBA is like you know, a cut above however other many tens of thousands that don't. Like, that's an accomplishment in itself. So it just made everybody kind of sit back like, yo, we need to stop using these platforms to tear down, like, other black people. Like, we putting on putting on these shows for for who? For, you know, like, who are we entertained? Like, who who's really getting entertained by us tearing down other black people on our on our black platforms and we're supposed to be uplifting each other so you know it gave it, it gave everybody a lot to think about you know because it's funny when when motherfuckers get called out on some shit you know a lot of times the first thing they'll say is oh well nigga you broke or some shit like that like like nigga you ain't you know you ain't got this or you at like what does that have to do with the truth that someone might be speaking? Like, like what has their, you know, what they've done for the white man or whatever the case may be in order to make some money and shit like that? Like, why should that negate somebody from being able to uh, speak truth to power? Like, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, peace to Devante. Who's that? Streeter, he said he threw Charlemagne the God into Mama's frying pan. I, I guess that is. <laughs> uh. Um, yeah, like, like, yeah, just like you said, like, just getting drafted into the fucking NBA is a success. 
Somebody mm -hmm. in the comments said that uh, I think he said if he's a bust, Kwame said this, if I'm a bust, then all black men should be a bust. I moved my mama onto a golf course or some shit he said. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. So, so, I mean, you doing shit like that, like, like, what? Because this nigga ain't got 12 Lamborghinis or some shit like that. Like, I heard the nigga talk about, I, I was just on my tractor or some shit like that. Like, the nigga, you know, driving tractors, like, probably doing real work and shit on a farm. You know, probably got his own farm. But how many niggas got their own farm? Like, like, what, what, what is your level of success? You see what I'm saying? Like, what are people gauging as being successful? If they um, put a diamond in their forehead and shit like that, you know what I mean? Like, like, is that, is that when you know that you've made it? Yo, there's nothing more valuable than peace of mind, man. <laughs> I will gladly take the pay cut for peace of mind. I mean, I've already, I've done it already. Like anybody that know me and and know what I stand for, like I be seeing, I be seeing comments of people think I'm industry or not trying to like rustle any feathers in the industry y'all must don't know me like anybody knows me no i could give zero fucks about being politically correct if i don't you know if i don't care to speak on some shit i just don't care that much about the situation but i'm definitely never been one to like say face or bite my tongue because i was like scared of like ruin a relationship i'm the bitch that walks away from shit for me, uh, respect is always first and foremost for me. Like, to me, respect, peace of mind, uh, comfortable, you know, being in a comfortable space. Like, these are the things that I require before even finding out how much I'm going to get paid for something. If I'm not comfortable, if I'm not, you know, happy, healthy, whole in a situation, fuck that bag. Yeah, I'm reading stuff about him. They say he buys kicks for um for the children because he grew up without kicks. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's definitely got a an energy that um like I watched two of his videos back to back and they wasn't short either. Oh, uh, he definitely was entertaining. Oh, you know? oh yeah, nah, he's you know he I to my understanding I I think he's starting a podcast his podcast himself um mm. that uh you know i i i know you know i know he's speaking you know i know he's speaking fact and i know he's speaking in realness you know he's speaking his truth but this is definitely a great rollout <laughs> you know if this is if this is a lead up to the mama's cooking podcast i mean i think he he started a youtube channel uh to do all of this venting and to my understanding he got like a hundred thousand subscribers in three days. So um yeah, people uh <laughs> first player to be drafted number one straight out of high school. Okay, see, okay, there you go. Oh wow, even before Kobe. I don't know. That's what I just read. Don't That's what one of our, our, our great, you know, viewers just said, I'm not sure. Well, I, I know I do. Okay, so I did hear that he's drafted straight out of high school, and and I know he, uh, you know, I know he was uh, uh, to the Wizards at the at the time when um when Jordan was coaching, and and I know uh, and you know some some things that I've been uh hearing, you know, Jordan was a was a tough coach, and and maybe that you know maybe that chemistry wasn't there between them. So it didn't, you know, maybe he wasn't able to be his best self because he may not have been comfortable uh, being coached by, by Jordan or whatever the case may be. I just know they were, you know, they was talking shit about him on a podcast. Like uh, to my understanding, you know, he, he did some great things. So I don't know why. Uh, I don't Oh, Somebody said Kobe wasn't drafted. Number one. Oh, okay. Well, um, so you know, he's there there's his accomplishments right there. So and you know, for these guys, you know, I guess they were just trying to uh <laughs> make make 
make content, you know, have some podcast banter, but uh, Kwame Brown was not here for it. Well, it seems like Kwame Brown is is definitely on some positives. He's moving positive, and he's and he's saying "fuck these sellout type motherfuckers." And if that's what he's about, then I support him. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's it. Like you know, fuck it. What else we got? <laughs> um, we've got some more, some more, uh, some more shootings. I think another shooting just took place today. What now? San Jose. I don't know. There's always a, there's always a quote unquote mass shooting. Somewhere. Yeah, and I don't even want to really. I don't want to get into it because it's <laughs> all some bullshit. Like, like. Can't we see, like... Well, they call it mass if more than one person gets shot, but, you know. We, right. we We know that can happen at a party. Actually, that did just happen at a party, too. Everybody keeps saying that Charlemagne was trying to paint uh, Kwame as dangerous, like an angry black man. Well, that's that's what he... I mean, I... That's pretty much what I said. I was, he, was, he was trying to say, don't fuck with him. He... You know, not saying, not like he was, you know, I wasn't saying that he's saying don't fuck with him because. Yeah, don't fuck he, with him because you can get shot or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, that's, basic, that's basically, and he ran down his family history like, yo, they not the one, we from the same area. We, you know, he so not the ones to fuck with. And he found out Kwame had a mind of his own. He was ostracized. Huh. Yeah, I can relate. <laughs> I can relate. The world is a stage. Do the math. Yes, it is a fucking stage. Oh, my goodness. Y'all don't realize how much the world is a stage. Like, speaking of the world's a stage, real quick, I don't even know what we was about to talk about, but I just want to bring this up real quick. Just to show you how far, like, like y'all don't understand the fakery that goes on. So did you see, um, did you see the video of Biden supposedly driving like a pickup truck mm -mm. On, on a track. You didn't see that video? Mm -mm. To do what? Exactly. What, first what of all, like? first of all, right. Well, let's get to that. First of all, can you even think in your mind when you've ever seen a president behind the wheel of a car ever? I don't care. Somebody young like Obama. Have you ever seen him driving? I can't, I, I don't remember seeing any president drive, really. Maybe, no, 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 don't get me. Maybe I saw Ronald Reagan in like a Jeep or some shit, now that I think about it. But anyway, all right, so they got your boy Biden behind the wheel of like a pickup truck, like a F-150 or some shit. And, and it, he's on a track or some shit. And he's coming in pretty fast and all of that. And, and, and he pulls up and the media is all there and and um they're taking pictures and one of them say, President, can we ask you about Palestine? And and he says, No, not unless um not unless you stand in front of the car when I'm pulling off. And then he says, just teasing. And then he says, Are you ready? I'm gonna, and then he's like, Rrr! and then he acts like he's and then he just acts speeds off. It looks like he speeds off, right? And so, first of all, I, I when I first saw this, I was like, this is kind of odd. Why is he behind the wheel of a car? Then I'm starting to think about the subliminals, the, the subconscious message that it sends. Okay, maybe they're trying to make him look like he still can have control, you know, over the country. He's still, like, young, like a young driving is for younger people, you know what I mean? And people feel like older people shouldn't be driving. And if he can show that he can, he's confident, competent behind the wheel of a car maybe um he's competent to steer the country you know there's all little subliminal shit that they try to put in there right which is probably what they were trying to do right but then a video came to my attention where they slowed this video down and they actually showed the interior of the same car the shit has two steering wheels. Shut up. The I'm shit has 
two. Stop, yo. Stop. <laughs> Stop. I bullshit you not. Listen. The shit has two steering wheels, just like you know when they take those driver's tests. Stop, yo. Days the cars with the two steering wheels, and the nigga on the right side also has a gas and a pedal. Are you serious? Digger. So now when they pulling in, do slow this video down your own self. When the nigga's pulling in, he got the Secret Service guy next to him. And when they slow the video down, you see that there's another steering wheel right next to the nigga. And the nigga that's sitting next to him got his hands on the fucking steering wheel. I can't take it, yo. I can't take it. I can't take it. So, so okay. they tried to trick us into believing that he was driving. Wait, now hold on, because because I at first it sounded like you was describing a commercial. And so this this is like a video. This is this is this supposed is, to be this is this like, like some sort of I don't know. You like see this a saying? day in the life of Biden. Like this is yes, maybe, out on the let's say he's at maybe he was at the Ford Motor Plant. And he was testing one of their new hybrid trucks. Let's just say that was the reason why he was behind. I don't know why this nigga was even behind the wheel of this fucking car in the first fucking place. Okay? <laughs> That's number one. Because you don't see presidents get driven. They don't drive. When do you fucking see a president driving? You don't. So anyway, <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. But anyway... The fact that they, like, they think you and I are so fucking stupid. And I knew it felt weird. Look, Yo, you slow it down and you see this nigga right next to him. The shit had two steering wheels. Wait, I'm, I want to Google Biden driving right okay, quick. Okay. I want to I wanna see it right now while Ooh, you're talking okay, about I, it. <laughs> hang on, I might have sent it to your IG already and you probably just didn't see the shit. Nah, I look at everything you sent. I, okay, I might have missed that on. one. Because, oh. yeah, I sent this. Wait, Biden driving truck. A minute ago. And put two steering wheels. Oh, shit. Wait, USA. Wait a minute. Hang on. A USA. To, this is USA Today. Fact check. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, they're trying to say false claim. Secret service agent was driving truck in Ford visit. Not, not Biden. Claim by Gateway Pundit. Fact check by USA Today. False. Okay, so they're they're already, as you can see, yeah, right. They, <laughs> as you can see, yeah. they're already trying to like say that that was speak. not true. That they're he already, really was driving. They're That's trying to refute right. the story. Of course. Okay. Okay. Like, of course they are, but they're gonna refute all kinds of stories, digger. They refute. <laughs> they refute that. I didn't even see that video. They, they say they say they still say they've been to the moon. You know what I mean? They still say they've been to the moon. So, yeah, of course they're gonna refute that. But listen, we saw what we saw. So once again, they want us to deny what we saw. Like, 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 they could say it's not true, but I damn, where's the video? Where's the fucking video? I, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm. Here's the, the, I got the video right here. <laughs> yeah, like, no, okay, video. I guess they photoshopped in a bit the the, uh, the steering wheel and all that type of shit. Like, okay, see the Secret Service guy sitting next to him mm -hmm. and, with his hands on a fucking steering wheel. Okay, so that's supposed to be him driving on the truck. Okay. He ain't driving that truck. <laughs> they gonna stop. Oh, they, they you don't see it. his hands on the wheel. They no, nah, they, 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 they cut it. They they don't yeah. yeah because the video I have shows him pull up and it shows the shit I'm telling like they could they could say it's fake whatever like listen the devil's gonna do some shit and he's gonna say oh no that's not what I did like he throws his rock and, and throws a rock and hides his hand like of course he was gonna find <laughs> the edited version yeah the edited slash. That's not the truth video. Hang on. 
Hang on, because I know I sent this. Aside from that, there's been a. I I see they are um, what's what's her name? What's 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 the congresswoman's name that's that's always getting turned up? Mar- Marjorie Green Taylor. She's always making headlines. Okay, what about her? I don't really. Oh, uh, oh well. Just recently, she said wearing a mask is is a uh, is like the Holocaust. So she's she's got the the Jewish community up in smoke. Well, I don't know if it's the mask, but the snake bite might be. Because yeah, again, she... how to how you know? They told people they was taking showers. That's all I'm saying. Thank you, Nino Martinez. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, they told people they were getting clean, getting cleansed. And really, they was getting gassed. I'm just saying. That's what they told them. Why would you do that? Why would you tell some people you was going to kill somebody? Why would you tell them otherwise? So that they don't fucking kick and scream and give you a hard time. <laughs> so that you, they allow you to just do what you want to do smoothly and without incident i have no idea what- i'm just saying that makes sense to me um i mean i'll be honest i i haven't really been checked into politics outside of noticing the the war going on right now between palestine and, and israel yeah and it's like that's been going on for how long? Since 1947. Um, why yeah, since why are people times. paying attention to it now? Like, 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 why is that a thing right now? I'm just wondering, like, is it because that's what they want us to look at right now? Because Israel and Palestine has been a thing since 19. 19- 47. I mean, I mean, they did the same thing to them that they did to us, you know, the Native Americans. Theoretically, only it's worse that. over here. It was worse over here because it was way bigger land. But they did it in more modern times. They went over there, took somebody's land. Did you know Israel? That place where they designated as Israel, that was not their original pick. It was going to be in Africa. I want to say in like Zimbabwe or somewhere like that. That was their first pick. Mm -hmm. Like, like this is not even some like. Well, historically, that was that was our land. Like, no, y'all wanted to go somewhere else. And then y'all chose this place. And then displace these people through force. And it's so ironic because aren't y'all the ones that were just oppressed? Like, weren't y'all just getting out of oppression? When did World War II end and all of that with, 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 with Hitler and all 45. of that? 45. And by 47, y'all are displacing people? <laughs> oh, shit. That's crazy. Think about it. Y'all are forcibly oppressing people after so after going through, you know, what you say is oppression. Wow. That's crazy. It's heavy. That's ballsy. Um, so yeah, now they wanna they wanna bring focus to it. Um Okay, it's fucked up over there. Now what? Now what? Why are we, you know what I mean? Like, yes, we should be in solidarity with all oppressed people across the planet Earth. Yes. But we should not be focusing on certain things when they tell us to do it. If you had no interest in Palestine prior to all of this, you know, 
What's the sudden interest now? Like, don't get sweeped up in popular shit. You know what I mean? And that's what happens with people. Now just everybody's screaming, oh, Palestine. Yeah, I don't even know. Like, tell me about the, tell me about it. What do you really know about the conflict? How much do you really know? I had to ask my son that because he almost went to a protest about it with a friend of his, you know. And you had to ask him, do, do, like, do you even know, know exactly? Do you even know why you be out there? Do you know who's going to be out there? Mm-hmm. Like, do you realize where you're at? And 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 the fact that you are a young black man, you're not going to be looked at the same as everybody else out there. So when did this start? Uh, oh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Didn't it start like in the night? Yeah, I, I, exactly. You don't know nothing <laughs> about this. I think you should sit this one out. And he sat it out. I was proud of him. He took my advice. Um. So yeah, first of all, get educated with what the fuck. You know what I mean? And I'm just saying, if you wasn't into this shit before, if you wasn't knowing about Palestine and that whole conflict before it became popular you know relax yourself because this shit because they're probably putting this out there to make you focus on something over there so they can do something over here while you're looking over there that's what magicians do that's what deceivers do. Ha ha, look at my hand. And it'd be this hand that be having the shit. You know what I mean? That's doing some shit. But you're looking at this hand. Ooh. Now, abracadabra. Ying. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's your magician voice. <laughs> 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 Abra- <Now> you- <laughs> <laughs> Abracadabra. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> that? That last effect, whatever that is. That was just the, the like the, the the thing appearing out of like no. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's the that's the sound it's called. Cool, that's the sound of it materializing. It's a, oh shit. Yeah, that's what that is. So I'm just saying, y'all, stop with the, stop with the, (laughs) like, and I feel like they laugh at us so hard, like, (laughs) they're falling for it again. Like, could you believe it? Like, no, it never gets old, Charles. It never gets old. Um, (laughs) (laughs) That's the Illuminati sitting at the table. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. No, Radcliffe, it never gets old. It never gets old, Bartholomew. Ah, what's them two niggas from uh, Trading Places? Mm-hmm. What's them niggas' name? Mortimer, right? Mm-hmm. Mortimer. And- Winthorpe and Mortimer. Winthorpe and Mortimer, yeah. <laughs> never gets old, Mortimer. Oh, I know Winthorpe, I know. They just keep going for it. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> I'm going to make them... <laughs> Wear diapers on their faces. <laughs> oh, Mortimer, you're so crazy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And you know about how much they bet that we could do it? A dollar. <laughs> A dollar? A dollar. Oh, oh it's Randolph. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I said, I read it Winthorpe, bro. I said Winthorpe. Hey, and I was right with you. I it was Winthorpe because all them fucking names out. Okay. Sound like his name should be Winthorpe, and right? Mortimer. Hell yeah. I'll, uh, go with, I'll go with Winthorpe, too. That was probably his cousin. But uh, uh, yeah, when it was like, and how much was this bet? And then Eddie Murphy said, a dollar. <laughs> that was funny mm-hmm. as fuck. Uh, let's see what's going on in the world. Um, 
Oh, shouts out uh, J. Cole. You heard J. Cole's new album? It's pretty dope. No, but I know he's playing basketball in Africa, and some people are not too happy about it. Really? Uh, Like the leading scorer over there in that league says it's disrespectful that the homie's over there playing. Hmm. I wonder why. Um, because he probably feels like he's only doing it because he's a celebrity and he might not be at the skill level that, you know, even though it's an African league, he probably feels like these, you know, there's people that. Uh, somebody said he made six points in four games. Really? Oh, oh that's <laughs> why. <laughs> mm. Not good. Yeah, and he's probably taking a space off of somebody that you know what I mean. Oh, uh, okay. Really use it, feed their family. Mm. You know how much jollof rice I could feed, and this man is taking my spot. He is already a platinum artist. Why is he playing on my team? Mm. Mm. It's unfortunate that we. I do you know, do J Cole. Why? It's unfortunate that we that we don't really have like we as black people here in America, we don't really have like international allies that that like ride for us. Cause something that um. That's some, because they know we are not from there. But no, but no. But something, you know, something that did you uh did you check out the interview that uh Dr. Umar Johnson did on the Breakfast Club? I saw some of it. No, not all of it. Well, there's some something that he said uh kind of struck a chord, and it was like, you know, the reason why the the reason why the, the government over here, like you see how they just race to make Asian oppression a thing. It's like now there's executive excuse me. Whoa. We've we waiting damn near a hundred years to to make you know to get an anti lynching bill passed and things like that. And, and he, right, he, he said the, the reason got they shit right away got it within a year. They was good money. And he he said and he said like the reason why stuff like that is happening is because of like trade sanctions with China. It's like it's like we have it's like these other these other races and these other ethnicities they have all of these like international uh you know things and are already established like with other countries and it seems like the reason why we can't we don't you know, we can't get our agenda pushed forth is because we don't have any interna- international allies like that that said, look, either y'all gonna start treating, you know, y'all start treating black people right or you ain't getting no silk, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, or we gonna tax y'all on gasoline or like there's no... Listen, Asians are already a political force within their own selves within this country. They don't necessarily even need an outside pressure. That's helpful. You know what I mean? And I'm sure that adds to it, but they're already a political force um, in this country. They already know how to, you know, lobby for certain shit and 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 marshal their, their votes and all of that type of shit. They've been having a certain political strength um, in this country. But yes, having... Well, Other shit. countries we, ally we, with them. That's fucking great. We we are the majority of their economic base. So saying that, just you know, still at the at the end of the day, they also like even with uh, say for instance, the the Japanese, they got their reparations after they were getting tossed in concentration camps. See, after World War Two, it's because um, uh, like America still does you know, still does business with all of their international counterparts. I feel like, I feel like we don't have anybody writing for us. That's going to have their knee on America's neck. Like, look, get my people right. Or, or y'all going to be affected in this way. Like when it, when it fucks with the American uh, bottom line, 
I feel like we'll start seeing change for ourselves. And I I feel like outside of us here and the money that we, you know, the money that we contribute into economy, I feel like we don't have any political allies outside of this country that can also uh, take it to America like that. Yeah, I mean, shit, that's the work that Malcolm was trying to do. How do how do we fix that? Malcolm was trying to bring our our plight to the UN. He was trying to get international um support for you know our struggle, basically what you're talking about right now, you know. And that was 50 some odd years ago. And still, <laughs> we don't have that support that he was looking for. And when we try to get it, you know, like honestly, Farrakhan is, has, has made attempts in the past to try to, uh, you know, get with people like Muammar Gaddafi and what they do to him. You know what I mean? They, they 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 demonized him and made him look like some sort of dictator and all of that. Come to find out this motherfucker was about to fuck up their economy had he implemented his gold standard uh, monetary system that he was going to try to put into uh, effect. Mm. So now we find out that's why they off them. Mm -hmm. You know? Um... And and he was somebody that was willing to to be this type of ally that you speak of, you know what I mean? He was willing to give um, the nation of Islam, I think, millions of dollars, and like the U.S. was saying, he can't do it. Like, nah, since they're on a certain bad list, to so you if you take that money, you're in trouble, type of shit. You see, you see how they do you. Like, so even when. <laughs> Even when we strive to do like what you're talking about, trust me, this is the type of shit they'll change laws, then they always do. <coughs> use laws to make it to where, or, or they'll use laws that are already in place because they know that this might be a move. And in case these niggas ever do try to get international, well, then we'll, whoever they get assistance from, you know. Because it's not going to be one of the main ones. It's not going to be, you know, France or Germany. Everybody's down. It's going to be somebody that we can easily isolate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, an African country? <laughs> Please. Shout out to Liberia. Mm -hmm. um, I know they be watching us out there in Liberia. You know, and that was the Liberia was founded by, you know, black Americans. Those were the back to Africa <clears throat> blacks um, who started Liberia. So yeah, let's just say Liberia wanted to support us. Come on, they're gonna shit on Liberia and, and you know what I mean? Man. That's the way the devil does, the us, conquer. Jonathan Roberson is us against the world. You ain't never lied. That's why we got to do for self, man, and, and really, you know, understand what that means and and, <clears throat> and really embody that, you know, because right now they're really trying to set up a world where we're so dependent upon <clears throat> everything that he provides, you know, and if that gets taken away, I mean, just, just the conveniences alone will have people ready to do, you know what I mean? Almost anything to get those conveniences back. <laughs> get ready, y'all. I'm telling you. It's time to get ready. Thank you, Mogul Maze. Appreciate you. Trying to think if there's anything else. We had a powwow early. I'm like, damn, so much stuff didn't happen in the last month. We're going to be flooded with topics. Like, why am I suddenly drawing a blank? 
Been a minute. Been a minute. I'm happy to see everybody though. Hi. Yeah, well, shit. How have you been? Didn't you go on some trips or something like that? Where'd you go? Been good. Well, actually, I'm, I mean, I've just been traveling back and forth. There's, you know, had a couple of deaths in the family. So, ooh, excuse me, traveling, hiking back and forth up the turnpike. And uh, a couple of, was gigging a little bit too. Okay. And then I, I don't know. I just, every time I turn on YouTube, there's Jamar broadcasting live. I mean, but not every time, but you know. But at least I, you know, I get to chime in in the in the comments. But uh, I I enjoyed uh I I enjoyed what would Lord Jamar say. Yeah, you come in the comments a couple times. That's all right. Oh, matter of fact, this is what I wanted to ask you. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> whatever we discussed, Kevin Samuels. Hmm. I wanted to get your take on Kevin Samuels. I I, I put out a thing, and it said, uh, "Is Kevin Samuels the type of man that black women should be taking advice from?" And you know, you had a whole range of answers. You know, a lot of people was like, "Hell yeah, he is. He's the only one telling the motherfucking truth on the internet, and y'all just can't handle the shit." And, you know what I mean? And then there's people like, hell, motherfucking no, he's not. Da, 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 da. I'm just curious, you as a female, first of all, have you watched, you know, have you watched his shows before? Um, I don't, I don't, uh, <coughs> I'm not too, I'm not too familiar with him per se, but I do see a lot of, I do see a lot of commentary about him. So I think, just based on everything I read about him, I could pretty much surmise what he, you know. Yo. Sorry, guys. I don't yeah. know what's happening. I, hit, I think I hit some shit by accident. My bad. We back. Uh I um I mean me personally I I would say I would say listen to all of it <laughs> good bad or indifferent like I I mean I've never I've never listened to a, a Kevin Samuels anything but from what I you know from what I have heard I mean I think why wouldn't you uh you know why why wouldn't you pick the advice from a man about what men think <laughs> or what men want. I mean, that's just, you know, that's just my opinion. Yeah. That's true. I mean, I think there's um you can, you know, you can take what you take what you want from it. <laughs> Somebody said I thought Lord Jamal was pulling the Kevin Samuels and hanging up on Digger. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like fuck that! I don't play these games. Boom, you out of here. Um, nah, not, not at all. I w I would think, uh, yeah, like you know, if a guy is if a guy is telling you some guy shit, you you know, you can you cannot like the answer, but he's telling you some guy shit. <laughs> right, and and. Oh, I don't want to get into all the nuances. It's just kind of like it, I, intentions matter. You know what I mean? And so is the intention to really build up, you know, or is it to be. Harmful? So people, so people be saying that like he shit on black women a lot. I, I, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, like I honestly haven't heard of Kevin Samuels anything. Like I don't know. Just like I wasn't even I, I wasn't. You need to watch it to be to understand. Really. I wasn't hearing Derek Jackson. Like I was just seeing a bunch of guys mad at Derek Jackson, thinking he was pandering to women, and I didn't know about him until he got caught cheating and had his wife on IG with him with a bonnet on, looking like Get Out. So it was like I. 
I don't know who the, uh, these internet sensations. It's like I don't know what they what what it I, is. Yeah, I would just encourage you to watch him first before commenting on it because there's certain nuances to it that I don't want to get into, and and I just would will not want to influence your how you look at it, and rather and see if you if there's anything when you watch it that <clears throat> you might pick up on. So is he is his is his is he supposed to be like satirical? Because I'd be seeing people like, ooh, he, you know, he he be flaming, he be, you know, he sassy, this and that. Like, is he trying to be like a ooh girl? Like, I don't, you know, is he gay? Is he what? what like, this what's, is what I'm saying? Like, like, <clears throat> I don't know the brother. I actually like a lot of shit he says, but. Okay. Um some some may call him metrosexual at the very least. You know, he's very well dressed. He's very, you know, there's some pictures of him, you know, from when he was younger that, you know, look a little how you doing? <laughs> a little, a little uh yeah a little uh i ain't got no pictures like that type pictures um so all i'm saying is now so so that being said right if you're giving this advice and you're a heterosexual man fine you know what i mean fine so because you, you say probably, you, because you probably are saying this with um you know with some sort of hoping that they can get better out of this in some kind would you, of way. would you would you say you, you said you agree with uh the majority of his advice or is it like yeah, yeah he says a lot of great shit but 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 here's here's what I'm saying but but if he's not I'm, and I'm just saying, if he's not, I'm not saying he is or he's not, isn't. I'm just saying, if he's not, then it's a little disingenuous to present yourself as heterosexual and and give advice from that lens if that's not really how you rock it. You know what I mean? If you're okay. vegetarian and you're giving advice on burgers and shit like that, you know. Right. Now, because I did hear you. I, now, because I, I heard you talking. And then you can be slightly, not to cut you up, but real quick yeah. before you continue. But I'm just saying, now, if that's the case, we do know that some homosexual men have a slight, I mean, let's be honest, like hatred towards women a slight shade that they will throw towards women so <clears throat> you know i just would hope that it's nothing involving that but it could be okay and i'm so just I keeping it real but it could be i don't know but if it's not, if he's just a regular heterosexual man who who just because he's a be about his. Trust me, I like how he dress and all of that type of shit. You know what I mean? Like he dresses very well, and you know what I mean? Like 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 a grown man should dress. You know what I mean? And the shit he said, he has a lot of statistics with what he talks about, um, with these sisters, and you know, basically he just tries to get rid of their delusional expectations of um the type of man they think they should deserve you know what i mean um right because I, I, I heard you talking about that from the the episode where i was in the comments you was like the woman uh, he gotta have six figures and all this and all that and but she's not on that level i i agree with that right so so i'm just saying like <clears throat> They said, wait, it's disingenuous to take this. He might be. No, it's not disingenuous because we don't know. I don't fucking know. 
What do you mean it's disingenuous to take this route? No, it's not. Like, I don't know. I'm not trying to play him. But certain people in the times we live in, you have to ask the question. You have to. Because a lot of these motherfuckers beat what you have to call the nigga on the plane. He was a what? <laughs> Bitch ass nigga. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of them running around here. And if I don't Ooh, know you, if nigga. I can't vouch for you and all of that type of shit, if I, you know what I mean? I don't know, dude. I don't know, dude. I'm just saying, I, I'll send you a, 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 this fucking, um, what's this shit? It was like a meme that somebody sent me. And it was like two pictures of him when he was younger. Send me something. Uh, send, send, like I like I ha I have to see how he acted in, in his mannerisms to like my 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 gaydar is, is is spectacular. I could look at somebody a mile away like oh well, yeah. Well, here's 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 an immediate. Go to your IG right now. Mm -hmm. Now don't listen to the nigga that's talking in it because he's gonna have you lack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But those two pictures are of Kevin Samuels. The one on the left is when he was in like high school, and the one on the right is like more recent. Now I'm just saying, both of those pictures are pictures that you can go through a million years of my pictures from 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 Ella from first grade <laughs> and you will never see pictures that look anything like that with men okay. anything like that okay i'm i'm going to shoot him some i'm going to shoot the picture on the left i'm going to shoot him some bell because any of the 80s r&b troop all <laughs> all look like this Okay, yeah, but those you niggas attend this barbecue, my greedy sister. And those dudes was kind of uh wait, did you hear that to the mic? <laughs> wait, what was it? Wait, can you hear this? This shit, your ass zesty as hell, boy. Your ass like you ready to hula hoop any minute. You <laughs> like you close the refrigerator with your hip bone. <laughs> oh my baby boy, your ass like a sassy Damian Lillard. You like you make bisexual Spanish prison documentaries. You suck the teeth off the video before you chew that bitch. <laughs> the car on top of the water bottle on purpose. Oh, baby boy, your ass like an untrustworthy chilling coach. You the nigga who invented spirit thing. <laughs> oh, my baby boy. Yo, who ass is this? Ass look like you got who, some who's this talking? Dumb ass, boy. Oh, my baby boy, no wonder why you always get into it. You is one. Oh, my baby boy, your nose fat as hell, too. That bitch like a dislocated ankle. <laughs> oh, my baby boy, your ass like a yo ass like a flamboyant volleyball coach that never made it. Oh my goodness! I'm, I'm I'm gonna you know what I'm I'm, I'm gonna bring myself I'm I'm gonna bring myself more up feed and and watch. Let me please, let me please. let me let me watch because a video because I, I I can't make any assessment just looking at a picture. To be honest, I got I gotta like let oh, me hear on. what uh you could make a little bit about. of an assessment though a little bit just a little bit. He I'm looks just... like he looks like Bow Wow's uncle on the oh, right. Man, and he looks like an R&B singer from the 80s on the left. <sighs> yeah, he do look, look like ready for the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I like, I can't, you know what I'm saying? I can't call it. Girl tonight. <laughs> Like he he looked like all them eighties niggas, so it's like I can't. I'm gonna shoot him some bell right there. I can't. I ain't gonna. What about I ain't gonna the end on the right though. Hold up. What about the he, one on the he, right? He. I told you he looks like Bow Wow's uncle on the right. But look, look at, at that the holding of the fingers and the smile. <sighs> I mean, it, it, the wrist might be snapping. The wrist might be snapping. I'm just. I don't. Uh, again. He says great shit. Well, okay. So, okay, so uh -huh. I might say, well, does it matter if if what point does it even matter? I kind of think it does. You know, what I, mean? I kind of well, think it does. That's I will, just me. I will. I, I will. Maybe it to you. I will say this: if you know, if the advice is good advice, good, bad, or indifferent, I'll assess it. Does it sound like it's coming from a, a 
a, a disingenuous place? Do, do it sound like that? Could he just be a guy scorned and now he just feel like lashing out at women? I'll be able to tell that once I watch a video for myself. Cause I can't, I can't really make that assessment, and I haven't, I haven't seen any of his videos. Yeah, well, just watch him. I'm, I'm gonna watch it. But yeah, y'all getting your feelings about him, boy. I tell you, they, they, that's a little odd too. <laughs> People get very uh, emotional when it comes to the to the gentleman. Um, I feel like that's how they were with the I, I what I call the antithesis of him is uh Derek Jackson. He's he's always he's always pissing men off because uh you know he's always saying things about women and and basically ready to go in on the men any any type any time uh you know situations happen or oh, this one got this celebrity guy got caught cheating that one he be ready to go in on him he take up for the women he he's basically you know what they call it like uh, almost dirty macking, but not really just just being a support system for the women and had all the women like you know singing his praises and then he and then he got caught out uh you know he got caught up in a scandal and and there and all the men was like, aha, we knew your ass was a shit. And uh yeah, I so, didn't know anything about him. I I didn't I didn't, I didn't know. know anything about him either. I just saw like he just was a trending thing one day, and it was because he, you know, he got caught out by this mistress and and his wife, you know, he had his wife on the camera, and then I'm like, Well, who is he? Oh, you don't know, he gives relationship, he's a relationship guru. I'm like Who's relationship guru? Who who certified him a, a relationship guru? Who else? The internet. I'm like, oh, so it's like, I don't know. It's this is a whole world of people that are like a thing because of the internet. And I, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just always the last to know the internet people. I'm like, damn, if if you didn't cure cancer, if you ain't rapping, if you ain't hooping, I I sorry. I'm just the last to know. Yeah, nah, homie got on my radar a little while ago, actually. Um, I've watched quite a few of his videos, and I'm like, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, he's definitely talking that shit. Like, he says some good shit. He says some good shit. You know what I mean? I'm just certain people, you know what I mean? And I be like that with rappers too. Like, 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 I don't just automatically like just accept a motherfucker. Like, you got to give me more than just one single. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, it's going to take a minute for me to really believe that you nice like that. Like, like, you got to show and prove. Like, sometimes the jury be out on shit. Like, it's just what it is. Like, you know what I mean? So. Mm, tell you right uh you know if i'm wrong i apologize and you know what i mean i will rep the man 100 you know what i mean but i don't know you tell me digger that's what i'm saying please watch it tell me because you got a good you got a good one okay <laughs> got, i got my homework cut out I'm for me looking at somebody that you that you uh put your shit up and i didn't even necessarily see it and i still be looking at it at them too i'm not going to mention no names but i think you know who i'm talking about remember wait, wait say that again there was somebody uh-huh that you was like is it me or did uh homie seem a little ah i know what you're talking about Hey. And I still be keeping my eye open <laughs> hey. ever since because after you said that, I was like, <laughs> after I said it, the whole room, the whole staff was like, mm. oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Further, you're saying too much. Oh, I'm saying too much. Oh, you're shit. Get away, clues. Oh, shit. All right. I'm shutting up. <laughs> hmm. But anyway. <sighs> no, I told my, my, hey, hey. <laughs> I've been looking now sometimes. You see what I'm saying? And that one is not as obvious. 
don't know. That shit jumped out at me like pink stars, yellow moon, <laughs> green clovers, blue diamonds, and purple horseshoe. <laughs> I was like, yo. <laughs> I was like, is it, is it me? <laughs> yo. I was like, huh? Because I, you know, my mind. Hey, hey, I thought about it like, look, but you know what's crazy? Don't say too much. No, I'm not. I'm not. I well, just, after the fact, everybody one by one at some point said to me, yo, I think you was on to something. <laughs> I know I was. <sighs> so I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Please tell me because I don't. Okay, know. I'll check it I mean, out. If you say, you know what? Nah, you bugging. All right. You know what? I'm going to take it as that. And um, yeah. They want to know who we talking about. I'll never tell. We, we can't <laughs> tell. Like, yeah. They want to know. Everything ain't for y'all. Exactly. Everything ain't for public consumption. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> this is brother and sister having a key right now. Okay. Oh, that was a good one, too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> We're about to take a break so we can laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Yeah. No, my gaydar are serious. So, I knowing. Turn that motherfucker on. All right, let me check. Let me check Kev out. Give yeah. you a proper assessment. Cause I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, hope not, though. Hope not. What up, TK Kirkland? <laughs> TK Kirkland is in the motherfucking uh, comments. Of course, it's not the real TK Kirkland, but TK Kirkland is everywhere. TK Kirkland be everywhere. He's fucking hilarious. Uh, what else we got going on? Um, hey, shit, we just shooting this shit. It's been a minute. I haven't seen you in a while. No, next time we come back, we're gonna have a real formatted show with some topics. And I'm just gonna, what would Lord Jamar do the whole damn show? Uh, I'm going to VA. Uh, me and Pooba will be. Hey, I saw that. Yeah, on Sunday. Yeah, show. Hampton, Virginia. Uh, if you're in the sound of my voice. Uh, yeah, we'll be at the motherfucking what's it called? Oh, rest in peace, Paul Mooney. That's right. Oh, Paul Mooney, Damn. rest in peace. And, and, you, and you know what? And as soon as I saw that, the first fact, maybe this is a good mix of applause with laughter for Paul Mooney. You know what I mean? I thought about all Godfrey impressions, like, damn. Oh, him and him and um. Ari Spears were having like damn near a Paul Mooney battle when he mm -hmm. died. Did you see it? Mm -hmm. They were doing Paul Mooney impressions, right? Mm -hmm. Like I saw an impression of um of, of Godfrey doing Paul Mooney, and you know he's giving respect when he passed away. Then here comes Ari Spears doing his Paul Mooney, but then he mentions Godfrey. Mm -hmm. He was like. And he said, and yes, Ari, you know, and you do me way better than Godfrey. <laughs> Godfrey's is good, you know, but yours is, is the quintessential one. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he threw a little shot at Godfrey. And then I think Godfrey had did another Paul Mooney. Yo, the shit was pretty fucking funny. They were going back and forth with their Paul Mooney's. Um, shout out to Paul Mooney, who, you know, Man, cut go, it out, y'all, in the go comments. From Pryor, fucking word. He wrote on uh, Sanford and Son, shit like that. Yeah. Why? What are they saying in the comments? Nothing. Just, about Paul? Just, just cut it out. Stop speaking about, ill uh, of the dead. They're talking about Miss Thang. Well, he was. I mean, that's everybody know that about Paul too. I mean, come on, you know. And we still got love him. Listen, listen. We all got trauma. We all got trauma that we, you know, 
different people express their trauma in different ways, man. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Paul wasn't a perfect man, but, you know, nobody's perfect. He was funny as a fuck. You know what I mean? Yes, he was. He was a funny as a motherfucker. You can't take that away from him. Um, he birthed a lot of legends as being a legend himself. Right. Shout out Paul Mooney. Um, damn, what's I going to say before that, though? Um, fuck. Oh, the Hip Hop Museum. Was mm. you there for the groundbreaking? I was there for the groundbreaking. All right. That was so dope. Tell me about it. Um, Rocky Buchanan. Yep. Shouts out to Rocky. Um, well, it will be a it will be officially opened in 2024. It was supposed to be. It was slated. It was slated to be open in 2023 for the actual 50 year anniversary of hip hop, but due to um, due to the little C, I ain't gonna say the big C. Due to little C, it got pushed back a year, and it will be open in 2024. But there were many uh, notable folks in attendance: Nas, Fat Joe, Slick Rick. LL and everybody grabbed the shovel, stuck it in the ground, took a dope flick, and that was uh that marked the beginning of what will be our place for all of our hip hop archival stuff. And in one of those, in one of those rooms, I'm actually actually gonna post some pictures uh in a little while, but there's the actual cassette tape, the the cassette tape of the Cool Mo D Busy B battle. Mm. It's in the archive. So there are things like that. There's like, there's like uh somebody, you know, there's rap books, there's like fat laces. I mean, there are, you know, there are these relics from the 70s and from the 80s that a lot of the pioneers and the legends have donated. Uh, to create this space, yeah, right, Serena? Well, right now, right now they have an exhibit in the Bronx Terminal Market, but um, that will there will be, you know, there's going to be a huge building, and there's going to be housing. On I saw like a blueprint of it. There's going to be housing on the top of it for like the veterans who find themselves, you know, for artists who f who fall on hard times. Like we, I don't ever. I don't ever want to hear Black Rob was homeless. You, you know what I mean? Things of that nature. So they are trying to, you know, they're trying to put in place a system where artists and, and veterans can find means and, and, and find help if, if they need to, you know, just have those resources. So shouts out to the whole underground hip hop movement. Shout out to Rocky B. Buchanan. It's been a long time coming. I, 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 uh, you know, I remember he's a good friend of mine. I remember speaking with him when it was just an idea, when it was a, uh, yo, rock, can I get a 16 for a mixtape that we trying to do? And, you know, just to see where, you know where it has come in in a ten year span is a uh, is truly a uh, you know perseverance. Yeah, Rocky Buchanan, man, <clears throat> like he was one of those that if it wasn't for him, we probably you know wouldn't have really even got our record deal. Well, I guess we would have, but. Him and Jazzy J had a studio up in, in the Bronx, Allerton Avenue, Strong City Studios. <clears throat> hmm. Rocky Buchanan was the owner of Strong City Records. Um, so Puba was on Strong City Records prior to, um, you know, the deal that we got with Elektra. But even though he got off of Strong City, he still was cool with them and so we would go there and record shit. You know, we would hang out, and that's where all the Zulu Nation motherfuckers was at. And 
you know, that was just ground zero for like people like Busy B and you know what I mean? Mm. Bam used to be coming through like mad people. Like I first met Diamond D up there when he was in another group with with, nice. this, uh, with this other dude, Master Rob and shit. Um, <clears throat> and like in order to get our demo, we had to like, we had to go up there for like two weeks and hang out and just wait for that extra time. Like, you know what I mean? This was free time we was getting. So we had to like nice. wait through other sessions. And then at the end, if, if motherfuckers was up to it, you know what I mean? Then we can go in there and work on some shit. It took us about two weeks of that for us to finally get a song together mm. that we could present. And then once we presented that, you know, the rest was history. So shout out to Rocky Buchanan. Super proud of um, what he's doing. I definitely intend on supporting it. Um, Absolutely. We have to because, uh, you know, who a hundred years from now, who's to, you know, who's to stop people from just completely removing us <laughs> out of the culture altogether you know if 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 we if we're left to everyone else's vices uh post malone will be the will be the hip hop great you know All right well 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 thank you f you too uh he said who are the hip hop gate who are the gatekeepers of the hip hop hall will nba young boy and yellow wolf be considered hall of fame mcs uh, to answer your question, I would say people like Rod Digger and myself are gatekeepers as well as as other uh, hip hop notables. And I would say people like NBA Youngboy and Yellow Wolf would not be considered um, <laughs> to be people in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. What about you, Digger? Do you concur? Uh, at this time, I can't put anyone who's 18 19 20 in a in a hall of fame but let's let's see where these artists are when they when they reach well, their well, well their actually 40s. yellow wolf is probably like in his 40s so that's not the criteria for him yellow wolf is just not a hall of fame mc no i, I wouldn't right. right but i'm i you know i would be i'm not gonna you know i won't i won't discredit the 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 young generation let's let's just see where they're well, at not, it's not about this in their, in their 40s right, yeah right now no, I, yeah not right yeah, now he's yeah, asking right. now so right now no not nba young boy he might no 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 he's saying, shit between he, now and yeah he's saying will he's saying will will they be considered hall of fame that, well well that would all depend on for someone like nba young boy that would depend on what he does from now until the future. for the next for the next thirty yeah. years, right? Yes. Uh, Yellow Wolf, no, he'll. He, we already know he's been in this long enough for us to know that no, he won't be considered a uh, uh, Hall of Fame MC. He's done nothing uh, that we, you know, in the real hip hop community can take note of or even care about. So no, he wouldn't be considered one. Um, and it's not just because he's white, but that's part of it. <laughs> there would be white people that would be in the Hall of Fame. Um, and some of them didn't even do hip hop. You know what I mean? And I said this on a previous show. People like Bob James, people like um, Billy Squire, you know, who made the big beat, um, you know all kinds of uh, break beats that might've been made by white people and shit like that, um, that we turned into hip hop, I would automatically induct them into the hip hop hall of fame. You know what I mean? Yeah. MC search. We could definitely put oh, some MC search. Deserves you know, to be, matter of fact, uh, he deserves to be in the hip hop hall of fame. P, yes. Ni um, P nice is, um, I, I believe he's one of the, one of the chairpersons for the, the hip hop museum. He was speaking alongside Rocky. So yeah, it's not a, I mean, it's not a color thing. It's a contribution thing. And you know, no, is your it's a color thing too. Because hip hop is is don't let's not get it twisted is black music, and of course it's it's black right. music. So yeah, but but no, I'm I'm saying that to say, 
being white doesn't automatically disqualify you no, from being no, in it. That's no, what I'm saying. No, 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 definitely. But for Yellow Wolf, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah. get the fuck out of here. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but I like that. Don't pop the trunk record. That shit was hard. Don't make me go pop the trunk on you. <sighs> Whatever. That was, <laughs> that was my shit. Yeah, I I never heard it. That shit was hard. Um. Go pop the trunk. Anywho. Um, let's see. Yay, 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 yay. Oh, 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 sad, sad news. Sit down, uh, digger. Are you sitting in my LED lace chair? Yeah, got an LED game chair. I'm, I'm showing off. I had to just show off right quick. <sighs> <laughs> All right, check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Now, no, 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 no. Don't, hey, don't do it. Don't give it to him. Like like <laughs> Stop. Stop it. <laughs> like you okay. rolling down on flag day. Like, whoa, whoa, relax. Um, like it's pride day you. over there. Relax. Um, so uh, I don't even know how to tell you this. Erica Mena filed for divorce from Safari. For real? Oh. Oh. I was rooting for them. I was I was actually rooting for Safari, yo. He has been the butt of jokes for so long. I was really rooting for him. <sighs> so was I. Um, so was I. Damn, wonder what happened. <laughs> I don't know. It's like one day everything was fine. And then all of a sudden. <sighs> yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> Are you okay? I'll, I'll be all right. <laughs> I'll be all right. <laughs> oh, shit. Because it, it hurts in here. In here. It's going to take some time. To heal in here. Whew. Yeah. They getting divorced. I'm mad that you even know that they getting divorced. Where the hell did you hear that, Jamar? On on these internet streets, digger. They 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 who 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 is on your timeline? I why I don't get I don't get this stuff on my timeline. You didn't see this in the internet streets? I did. This is like today. I think I saw that. That 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 that's fresh news. Oh wow! Get down. Yeah, that's fresh news. Um. Yeah. Mm, damn. It hurts, y'all. It hurts. I I, you know, I I see Kim K back out here in these streets. You believe in a? Oh, is she? You believe uh, in a couple, and then and then and then. They break your heart. They break your heart. Man, they say, is she pregnant with the second baby? Is she? Oh, somebody just said it in the comments. Wow. Wait, now, when you say Kim K is back on the streets, you mean she fucking with niggas? You seen the well, fucking I, with niggas? No, I don't know. I just they, I just saw a story break. Look, I'm talking about your timeline. Yeah, I, 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 a story came across my feed, and she she was partying at some some billionaire's house and shit. She had the the one sleeve. She had the one sleeve with the one leg thing going on. Oh, and it was a, it was a billionaire nigga's house. Yeah, but I guess it was like some. It was like just some swanky California party. It wasn't a black nigga that like look athletic that look like he can like fuck nah. shit out of her. Then she's not fucking with the nigga. She wants nah. to like that. Trust me, she's gonna go back to a nigga that's like physically fit. She don't want that Kanye flabby. You know, no, they're gonna do what every rich. She don't want just smart and rich. They're gonna they're gonna do what every non black woman does after they've had their Ooh. taste after, after they had their Ooh. taste of <laughs> after they've had their taste of black dick. 
or procreated with and you made them a, a nice mixed baby, they're going to go back to their side of the tracks and go get back in their family's good graces and slide themselves back at that uh back at that trust fund table. They're going to earn, you know, they're going to slide their way back in in their family's good graces, get themselves put back in the will and uh get get back with they can folk. You, you, know, you know what? what I'm saying? You know what? You right. But she probably still get fucked by a nigga on the side. But here's the thing. Um Nah, you right. You know why? Because at some I know I'm right. <laughs> and yeah. We've seen it a hundred yeah, yeah, yeah. times. But also at some point, niggas, niggas is gonna be too prideful to even be with them bitches. Like, like, first of all, all the niggas that they done hit. Like, like the the the, the list is long now. You know what I mean? Like now it's like now you gotta you gotta fight all kind of inner pride and and. And have to know that when you see this nigga, 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 this, and this nigga, they all fucked your girl. You know, one of them was even on film. And you know what I mean? Like, 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 it's just real crazy like that. Like, you got to accept that. Like, the only one that's really going to accept that, you know what I mean, is one of these sucker ass, you know, them sucker white boys. Like, like, he's like, I ain't going to front. Like, you know what I mean? Like, niggas at some point, one, Damn. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. no. I'm just, used to wouldn't go for that. I was about to say, don't, don't act like it's because yeah, it's niggas like, don't want them. No, the women don't want y'all black asses no more. They get their taste and then they go back over there. Because yeah, no, 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 niggas will fuck for. Kim Kardashian over and over and over again. Yeah, but well, but like she's a catch. Will, how many would marry her? Like, do you think? Like, is there another like millionaire one that would marry her again? Yes, yes, because she's a billionaire. Yes, they would. Yes, niggas right, would. Because yep. she got money. Because she, she got money. Yep. Yes, they would. Right. <laughs> yes, they would. You right. You right. You right. You right. You right. When when you right, you right. Niggas uh, are saying no, they won't marry. Lies. Well, Lies. They, they wouldn't be happy about it. Like, like, like. It seems like. A lot of these rich white dudes, like they'll marry a whore, like and just not give a fuck. Like I don't care what she used to do. We used to didn't do like, that. Like, I don't know what happened. What I'm telling you, we used to didn't do that. The like, industry, sorry, babe, you the, know, the industry. I think this this entertainment industry is is turning our brothers out. Like now, niggas is marrying strippers, and and no no no, you know. No, Yo. no offense to the strippers, but that used to be a like a a no no. <laughs> niggas will be, and then niggas might be fucking with the bitch for years. I mean, like Rallo, we've been fucking with each other for five years. Why don't you just, come on, bitch? You know I can't marry you. You was a fuck. You was a stripper. You was a hoe. Like we just get to only fuck around. Like now, it's like Rallo. You know, I'm just making up a funny name. I know there's a rapper named Rollo, but whatever. <laughs> um, Tuskegee, whatever the fuck his name is. Uh, why don't we get married? Is the sure, baby? You know, you don't care about that. I used to be a prostitute in the in club. Girl, you my woman now. Not only another thing, an, another thing that niggas is taking pride in doing too. Remember once upon a time, like if a homie smashed, like you didn't want that. Right. Like now you, niggas you are happily people. fucking behind each other. Like why? What, what, ew, what's wrong? When did that start? Yeah. I don't know. Like, like, like. Yeah, we definitely. <laughs> there's definitely been a disconnect <laughs> there's definitely uh you know right. been a, some kind something something got you know somehow the message didn't transcend from our generation to our like, kids like, like like you got you got you got people that like shit brothers that have fucked like girls that fuck with two brothers you know what i mean like like yeah when is uh, <laughs> we look, we look, we old. You can tell we old. Yeah, 
because it's just <laughs> like like yo, I got two brothers and never in a million years like have we ever cross pollinated like that. You know what I mean? And you like, would never, if you even thought a bitch, if you even suspected it, like no, bitch, you gotta go that way. Right, right, yeah, yeah. You like my, you was with my brother, like, like, oh, like, yeah, that's crazy, right? But now, that's like a turn on. Whoa, word. You fuck such and such? Oh, where? Oh, it must be good. I want some too. Ew. Y'all nasty. Oh, oh, she used to be <laughs> my girl, but now uh, she's with she's with Tim. Uh, she's with me now, but she used to be with my brother. But I love her. And she has a son with um my brother and has two kids with me. <laughs> you know this shit like that out there, right? No, just you know that's going on, right? It's na- every like what I described is is real. Yo, everybody's yeah. nasty. Everybody think it's nasty. Like niggas think it's so cool to just talk about their girlfriends fucking other girls. Like, oh, hey, we're gonna have a threesome. My girlfriend's fucking other girls. Like, like this is just so like just oh yeah. Watching what was it? Uh Black Ink. You watch Black Ink? Mm-hmm. So there was a recent one where Donna was getting in beef with Tati. Do, are we familiar with these characters? Mm-hmm. And and so Donna's man, what the nigga used to call his name? Vagina Slayer. But what he's called himself now? Because they don't call him Vagina Slayer. I forgot. I haven't, I haven't watched it in a while, but I know all the characters. All right. So the nigga Vagina Slayer is talking about, yo, I don't get it. These two just had a sexual. Now, keep in mind, Donna is his girl. Mm-hmm. He's like, these two just had a sexual encounter the night before. So I didn't understand what was going on. And he's just talking about it so casually, right? Yeah, and I'm like, what? What, what? what do you mean they just had a sexual encounter? And how are you like... That's okay with you? Right. And so it turns out, you know, maybe Donna was fangering um, Tati by the pool or something. I don't know. And what this nigga's just watching and allowing this shit to happen. Like, like, like... What? It's like it's like if she's Whoa, gay, man. okay, but this this is your girlfriend, and like you're okay with it. If like, she's gay, then why is she your girlfriend? Like, I don't know. There's there's a uh, I don't know. All of this stuff is. Uh, I mean, just think about just think about how like our parents, what was coming on TV, Remember, loose like like Lucy and Ricky. They slept it like married couples were sleeping in the same bed. Yeah, they were sleeping in separate beds. So then, like a couple years later, then on TV, they see people actually kissing on the lips. And it was like, oh my God, what is this world coming to? Fast forward to what you see on TV now. Is it like, is this supposed to be evolution? Like, that like now we are now we are the people that are looking well, at that's what they want to claim. <laughs> they would want you to think that it's something called evolution. They want you to think that this is that where we're at now is actually we're at the pinnacle. You see, we're at a higher level of evolution because evolution is supposed to get better as time goes on. So if time has gone on and we're now at the most recent times, then we must be at our highest evolution ever. And so any, any of our outlooks on, on, on life and humanity must be the outlook of a higher evolved being. Okay. So that's why all these fucking concepts that they're coming with now are, they try to act like they're so virtuous and they're in the name of, being higher evolved beings come on it's 2021 haven't we evolved to the point you know that's the, how they'll premise a lot of shit before they spew out some fucking bullshit behind it but um yeah evolution creates a framework 
for bullshit. <laughs> it creates a framework to be able to tell lies later. See, that's why they don't mind saying that the black man is the original man. If you believe in evolution, then, well, if the original man is the first, if the black man is the original man and things get better over time and the white man is the newer man, well, then that would mean if we go by evolution's logic that the white man is the newer, better version of, of man. Rather than just some new um, childlike species. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. As is, is how we could be looking at it. They want us to look at it like, no, we're actually the better version. We're the new and improved version. And of course they'd want us to think that. But that's not true. You can't even stay in the sun, God damn it! How are you <laughs> improved, motherfucker? <sighs> You're not new or improved. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Well, no, you are new, but not improved. I'm here. Oh. I just had to like hawk spit. I can't see me spit on camera because I'm a lady. You're such a fucking lady. <laughs> I had to do a <laughs> such a fucking lady. You don't hawk spit on camera. Not uh, you. Nigga. I was trying to figure out. I'm like, damn, ain't no way to like just kind of like <laughs> dip right quick. No, I just got to straight turn the camera off. <laughs> she said she just hot one out of her nose. <laughs> All right, y'all. I had to get that out. <laughs> so I'm such a fucking lady. Um, but yeah, man, some crazy. We're dealing with some craziness right now, digger digs. I don't know what the fuck, man. Yeah. Oh, real quick. Pop culture. Have you been watching The Godfather of Harlem? Yes. Yeah. Are you all caught up? All the way. Let's talk, baby girl. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is a great fucking season. A fantastic season. I'm going to, first of all, disclaimer, if y'all haven't watched The Godfather of Harlem, and if you're not caught up with all the episodes, we may inadvertently say some things right now that would spoil it for you. I suggest that you go in another room or some shit like that and don't listen to what the fuck we saying because we about to fuck some shit up for you. So continue. What were you going to say? Um, Much like uh, I would have liked for uh, Freeway Ricky Ross to confirm what was actual factual yeah, or not uh, in Snowfall, I wish there was someone that I'm can do that. Johnson for us with this like ooh, right. i'm like oh are they really the ones that got the you know right right well, the... <laughs> yeah this is definitely a lot of dramatic shit yeah um listen i'm gonna tell you probably one of my favorite episodes would probably have to be the episode when um they hung you know the, the 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 black guy and the white guy for, yep. for you know working together mm -hmm. and then the fucking guy that that chin brought up try to come to him and blah blah mm -hmm. blah mm -hmm. and try to squeeze him and then shit was looking bad and he was like yo we're gonna have to share the money with the guys and you you know you as the viewer is looking like damn like damn chin you pussy yeah. bitch ass nigga and, and you're like yo you know shit usually work out for my nigga bumpy like it's not gonna work out for him this time. You know what I mean? And then they want to meet at his club to add insult to injury and da 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 da. And then, yo, when they flipped it on him, yeah. I knew it was a flip, though. Yeah. I knew, I knew it was gonna be a flip. Well, once he started talking crazy to him, that's when I was like, okay. But, but, but the, 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 the point that, like, as a viewer and just as like a fan of the character, 
you know, the, the part that had me like, yeah, was when fucking Bumpy got up and he pulled the fucking razor out and he came behind fucking Banano and he had that fucking shit to his neck and he was like, you dumb motherfucker. Like, 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 yo, yeah. Nah, I knew, I knew, I, I knew it was a flip before that. I knew it was a flip when chin uh, it's not when, about knowing that it was the flip it was no, the, saying, the feeling of but i'm saying when dude was in the kitchen talking to chin and chin was looking at him like oh where are you you met with banano like i knew his brain was clicking in that you moment knew that piece of shit never fucking liked me like why would you fuck would you work with him mm-hmm. you know what i mean in the first mm-hmm. fucking place but yo i'm telling you when bumpy was like Dumb motherfucker moving, like, you'll be next. I wish you would, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Like, I just felt like, yes, Bumpy, yes, these bitch ass niggas. Like, like, yo, it was beautiful because motherfuckers be thinking they smarter than you sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you just gotta show niggas, like, nigga, you're not fucking smarter than me. Keep fucking with me. I'm going to be behind you with a fucking razor to your fucking neck talking about you dumb motherfucker. Like, <laughs> you know what's, you That's know what's, how I move, yo. You, you know what's so crazy? I always be finding myself like kind of like at war with myself watching these shows because it's like, damn, I'm rooting for Bumpy. Like, I want him to win. But motherfucker, you killing the neighborhood with dope. <laughs> Right. And 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 first of all, every time I watch it, I'm like, God damn it, I gotta get fucking um Ilyasha Shabazz. Shout out to Ilyasha. We gotta get Ilyasha. Oh, yeah, she's supposed to get a guest for a long time. Yeah, uh I got, you know, a lot of people I gotta part of me if I haven't got back to certain people, I just man. Hey, we're artists too. Like we got, yeah, we be I having need an assistant or something, man. <laughs> we be having rap. People don't be re- realizing we be having rapper shit to do too, and actor shit. Listen, I need an assistant, but I can't pay no assistants right now. So anybody trying to, get, so you you might hear me say that. I listen. You'll be interning as an assistant, okay? But um, <laughs> yeah, you'll be interning. Uh, but let's talk about it anyway. Um, I gotta say the guy that's playing Malcolm, Malcolm, this one, the best, he's doing an excellent job. He's the best Malcolm I've ever seen. Let me, let me, I might have to agree with that. Um, because what was the one that Regina King did? The Miami shit, A, a, a night in Miami, that Malcolm. Wasn't feeling that Malcolm. That Malcolm, he was okay. He was like an Obama. He 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 reminded me more of an Obama. What you hawk spitting the gang? Damn girl, he was hawking loogies all over the motherfucker. She got the loogie too. What? She, what? Whoops! Malcolm yeah. loogies again? What? what? Malcolm said, listen, I don't know. My uh my internet getting weird. Malcolm said, I was the best, Malcolm. Don't you get it twisted, Digger. Don't mm-hmm. you get it twisted. Um yeah, I wasn't really feeling that guy. Something about his aura wasn't Malcolm like. He was he was not as strong. This guy, now, now, don't get me wrong, Denzel played a great Malcolm. This guy looks more like Malcolm than Denzel. Mm -hmm. Um, His mannerisms, his voice, I mean, everything. I really, I'm I'm, I'm curious to know how Ilyasha feels when she watches this. Is she, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and, And one thing I must say, the constant thread um no that wasn't me in clockers <laughs> uh that cursed out Isaiah Washington in front of the jewelry store thank you Danny um 
the, the 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 constant thread though when you see people play malcolm is this dignity this 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 air of dignity mm-hmm. um I think with Denzel, it was like Denzel being like the phenomenal actor he is. I still feel like I'm looking at Denzel playing Malcolm. This guy is making me feel like I'm watching Malcolm. Right. Like I saw Denzel transform into Malcolm. You see what I'm saying? Right. Whereas, yeah, this guy, it looks like you're looking at Malcolm. And... And I think what also helps this guy as an actor is we don't have the um we don't know him. We don't we can't exactly. attach him. We don't have the previous baggage to attach to him but, as an actor. I think he's played Malcolm before. I think he may have played Malcolm in one or two other things, and people keep circling back to him okay, like well, they need to because he's he's that that's guy fucking calling this guy is great matter of fact i'm gonna go as far as to say that if not just him a few people but if he specifically doesn't win some sort of award some sort of emmy Mm -hmm. or golden globe for his portrayal of malcolm it would be a travesty not that you know travesties happen all the time in this business but i'm telling you i know how to spot those type of um performances and there's a lot of performances like that being given on this show um uh i think bumpy's wife is great his wife bumpy himself chin chin's daughter chin's Chin's daughter daughter is fucking great Mm -hmm. like she's killing it even the fucking the, the the white boy who ernie I think his name that's Ernie. I think, yeah, I that's think so. Yeah, the, the young white boy, whatever. The, the right. one that just went and handled the, the, the clan. Right. Exactly him. Yo, there's so many great supporting cast members on this show. Um shit, Adam Clayton Powell. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Like, like this this show, like this is a great, it's just excellent. it's just great. It's just great. Show. Um I'm mad. I'm not on it. Hopefully. <laughs> like, I'll just be a dope fiend up and sitting up in the mosque. And well, I, my, man, my man Al got on there. Fucking, mm. I haven't seen him yet, but I saw him on the set. He he told me he was on there. Is he one of the nation? Who is he? I don't know. I, I, I think he might be one of the gangsters running with um Method Man. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um but yeah, man, I just love that fucking show, man. It's a great, it's a, it's definitely a great show. Well written, well acted. Um, of course, nothing's perfect, you know. You're sure you're gonna have people in there. I don't like how they're portraying the nation of Islam. Or, listen, you know, there's always gonna be something for somebody not to like. But all in all, you know what I mean? It's yeah. a great fucking show. Um Another show that I just got caught up on. I don't know if you watched this show. I'm not sure if I asked you this before, but um, do you watch The Handmaid's Tale? Um, I I watched the first season. I, I know they're up to like season four. Sure. I haven't I haven't I haven't watched it past the first season, but that season was great. It's just so much stuff on TV. It's just hard to keep up. Yeah, that's that, a good. That was a good one. Though. Another fucking good one. Oh yeah. Um, um yeah. I I just got into. I just got into uh something called Mayor of East Town, but I'm I'm. Yeah, just, I've been watching a little bit of that. Okay. Lit. Mm, I got something that you should watch. Uh, so on Netflix, The Serpent, real life story of um. Uh, damn his his name Char- his name is Charles something, but basically him and his girl they were like they were drugging, kidnapping, and killing like tourists over in Thailand. This was like back in the seventies, so it's set. In the, I love the seventies. That's like one of, one of my favorite decades. So anything looking disco wish and bell bottom ish, I'm here for it. But 
set in the seventies, and yo, this man was like ruthless. He was kidnapping, drugging, killing people, taking their passports, taking their money, just living the life of fucking luxury. And back then, you know, passports, you could just literally swap a picture. And, yo, he was so ill. He got arrested. He drugged the fucking police guards, broke out of jail. He drugged. He was on a tour bus with tourists. He drugged the whole tourist bus, tried to make off with a whole bag of passports. Yo, yo, this nigga was ill. And it's a true story. You got to see it. The serpent. Crazy. You like ain't no way in hell he got away with all that shit. Ain't no yo, it's it's like you on you ain't even gonna believe it. And it's this is and it's real. Okay, so this is a documentary. This is um well, it's a docu series, but it's all based on right. true story shit. Yeah, he, he killed like he killed like that they know of twelve people. And this is a. Taking a money, taking a the nigga had got a he got an apartment and everything. Wait, he was, and this like, was a white dude, yeah, French dude. He got a girl, got her into it. Had they was they was just tag teaming motherfuckers. Mm. Yep, getting these tourists. He he got an apartment. He got he had like some Airbnb shit going before it was Airbnb. Oh, cheers to your vacation. Next thing you know, they sick as hell. He drugging them. He just getting them fucked up to the point where, uh, you know, they fucked up and he off with their passports and they breed. Check it well, out. Check it out. The Serpent. Yep. The Serpent on Netflix. Okay. Well. <laughs> That's uh, that's what we watching, huh? Right now, mm-hmm. definitely. I'm there every fucking Sunday, ready for that motherfucking Godfather of Harlem. Oh uh, well, well, you know, this is the break. They um, it's not coming back on till August. Just the mid season break. I ain't know that. Mm-hmm. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Damn, damn, damn. Yeah, well, I guess Bumpy's daughter too, the one that's the Muslim now, whatever. Yeah, she's a great actress too, man. Yeah, that that whole that whole series, the whole cast, man, is whew. wow, love it. Yep. Yeah, it'd be an honor to get on there. I think I'm gonna speak it into existence. I, I'll look. I'll I'll, I'll be a recurring character. I, I'll be one of the dope fiends in the bed, like oh, and convert the <laughs> convert to Islam. I'll just be happy for a little extra scene. I just want to. I just want to have <laughs> the Godfather on my resume. Shit, I don't think about it. I could introduce um. I can introduce the father on that show. It's the right time. The father of law was walking around Harlem at that time, too. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Even though I don't feel like I look like the father, I feel like I look more like justice. Mm. Look at your doggies. I'll I'll, I'll play justice. Mm. Shave my beard and play justice. Mm. Okay. Well, look. (laughs) <laughs> we we just did a good two and a half. I think I think we good for now. Yeah, got right. some got some content pieces. Good warm up. Yeah, good warm up. Some of these we're gonna have to not name them. What the what the obvious name should be because mm. we don't want to get in trouble mm. with these fucking platforms of fucking. Deception and censorship. 
fucking crazy. But listen, we thank, uh, appreciate y'all coming through. Thank y'all for joining us once again. Everybody who donated, thank you for your donations. We appreciate you. Um, peace to all of uh, all the family. This shirt right here, I know a lot of people is you know asking about this shirt in the chat. Um, brother that name it the that made it the name of his um. This company is called Noble Republic, but I don't think their website is working yet. But you can go on IG. Um, and I think he has a uh IG page that says Noble a Noble Republic page. He also has what's it called? Okay. S Sultan Holiday is also where I would go. That's his page. Sultan Holiday, but D-E-Y instead of D-A-Y. So Sultan Holiday spelt with a D-E-Y. So day like bay because he's a Moorish brother, you dig? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he got some fire shit. He sent me some nice merchandise. And of course, if you're loving the uh, God cast hats, you know, we got hats. We got the the new hats, the new hoodies, T-shirts. You can go to hoodg.com. Get your fix. Get you some. God cast gear, brand new being gear. At the hood G and get yourself straight. All right. I think we're getting ready to be out, y'all. Appreciate you joining us once again. For you not a mean God cast. I am Lord Jamar. I'm Digga Digga. Oh well, man, Godfrey will be back. Until then, we say. Hey. Hey.